Today, we're going to explore entropy in terms of macrostates and microstates. And we'll also do this with the help of two dice. So what is entropy exactly? So entropy is a measure of disorder within a system. And this disorder increases in isolated systems whenever a process occurs. And a process is any event that alters the state of the system. For example, a temperature or pressure change or heat transfer and so on. So for example, when ice melts in a warm room, the orderly structure of water molecules in the ice breaks down. This increases the overall disorder within the system as it turns into liquid water. And this liquid water has more random molecular motion. So during this process, the ice has gone from a lower entropy state to a higher entropy state. What are macrostates and microstates? A macrostate is a description of the overall conditions of a system from a macroscopic viewpoint. For example, every system has a specific temperature, pressure, volume and total energy. These properties describe the system as a whole without us needing to worry about the state of the individual particles that make up this system. A microstate is a specific microscopic configuration of a system. For example, the exact positions, velocities, spins and other measurable properties of each atom or molecule. In fact, there can be many different microstates for a single macrostate. And let me show you why this is with a simple example. Let's say we have a small box that contains two point light particles. Now we can measure the macrostate of this system by finding its temperature or the average kinetic energy of the two particles. We can also find the pressure which will depend on the average force imparted by these particles on the walls of the box. But we can also measure the microstate of this system. For example, the positions of the particles in this box, their current velocities and so on. In fact, we can have many different microstates or different configurations of particles all with the same macrostate. So we could have a configuration like this, or maybe like this, or even like this. So long as the pressure, temperature, volume and total energy do not change between these microstates, they all belong to the same macrostate. So a single macrostate can have many different microstates. And the higher the number of microstates associated with a single macrostate, the higher the entropy is for that macrostate. So if we know the number of microstates that correspond to a given macrostate, we can use the Boltzmann formula to calculate the entropy. So what is the Boltzmann formula? So the Boltzmann formula tells us that the entropy of any given system is equal to the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the natural logarithm of the number of microstates that correspond with our current macrostate. And as you can see here, the more microstates we have, the higher the entropy is going to be. So to understand macrostates and microstates a bit more intuitively, let's imagine we have two six-sided dice and we shake the dice within a glass or a cup. Now, in this context, the microstate represents a specific arrangement of the dice. When we stop shaking this glass and we see what values we get on top of the dice, for example, on one of the dice, we could have a value of 1, and the other could have a value of 3. This would represent a single microstate. A macrostate is defined by the total sum of the numbers on the dice. So for our example microstate of 1 and 3, the macrostate would be 4, because it's simply the sum of 1 and 3. But you may have noticed 
there are a total of three microstates that match the macrostate of four. We've got a microstate of one and three, but we could also have a microstate of two and two, and also a microstate of three and one. They all add up to four. If we shake the dice again in this glass, what is the chance of getting a macrostate of four again? In fact, what we should be asking is what is the most likely macrostate we'll get for this system every time we shake the glass? Well, the answer to our question is whatever macrostate has the highest number of microstates. Or in other words, the macrostate with the highest entropy. If we were to write out every possible microstate for every macrostate for these dice here, we'd find a sum of 7 from our dice or a macrostate of 7 is the most likely value we'd get because it has the highest number of microstates in this particular system. So if we were to write out all the microstates here for a macrostate of 7, we can see that we've got six different microstates for the macrostate of 7. The least likely macrostate is either a 2 or a 12. And this is because only one pair of values can achieve this sum. So for a 2, a macrostate of 2, a microstate of 1 and 1 can only achieve this value. And for a macrostate of 12, we can only have a microstate of 6 and 6. These macrostates only contain one microstate. In other words, they both have lower entropy. So entropy tends to increase over time because the probability of a system moving towards a macrostate with more accessible microstates is much higher than the probability of moving towards a macrostate with fewer accessible microstates. And finally, to make this concept concrete, imagine a container of gas with a divider in the middle. When the gas is confined to one side, it has a low entropy because there are fewer ways to arrange the molecules in this confined space. In other words, there are fewer microstates. When the divider is removed, the gas can spread out, filling the container and increasing the system's entropy. This particular macrostate has far more microstates because there are many more ways the particles can arrange themselves in this larger volume. Now, all these gas particles could randomly end up on one side of the container again. But the chances of this happening are astronomically minute because there are so many more ways to arrange themselves in this larger volume. So let's end this video with another definition of the second law of thermodynamics, which is the total entropy of an isolated system will either increase or remain constant over time but it will never decrease.